Before we begin, I'd just like to give a huge shout out to Jerry52. Jerry52, thank you for joining the Upper Crust. Every bit of support helps, so we're glad to have you aboard. If you guys want to get shout outs like this, consider joining me over at Patreon. Every little bit helps. It helps keep the channel running. It helps, it helps keep us on board while we try to move everything to be independent of, you know, the partner program over at YT. Anyway, I'm doing things more for my, uh, for the enjoyment of it, so I hope you guys will enjoy this video. Let's get back to the show then. <laughs> Hello guys, California Mackie, hope you're doing well, and welcome back to Sweet Bowl. Oh, sorry, I had it on mute. <laughs> Where did we get left off? Oh god. Oh yeah, we're back at school. Oh wait. Huh? <laughs> 15... 12, 23, 15, and 1... Yeah, it's this one. Sorry. Load. <laughs> yes, let's load the save file. The next day, Yuji headed to school. His mind's still fuzzy from lack of sleep. Hold up. There's something that I realized. I need to check video quality. Hey guys, we're back. Ah, uh, sorry. Anyway, <laughs> I just checked the uh, video. Yeah, it was recording audio. Thank god. The next day, Yuji headed to school, his mind still fuzzy from lack of sleep. He hadn't gotten much rest the night before. He, every time he'd close his eyes, he thought about that blood-red bathwater and the creepy sounds he heard on, on the walk home. Because, you know, it's a Christian school. <laughs> so, <laughs> I really didn't like how my sense of foreboding was right. Going back. Hold up. <clears throat> Downsides of setting up a new mic, especially with a gorilla pod like contraption, it is not consistent. Ah, okay. Okay, I don't care. This is good now. This is good. By the time he'd finally fallen asleep, it was light out. Unsurprisingly, when the alarm had woken him up a few hours. Later, he'd felt like garbage. That's me! <laughs> Thankfully, he'd managed to survive this, his morning classes and get through lunch. Now he just had to make it through the afternoon. Basically, me at work. <laughs> I mean, I'm not too enthusiastic. It's not exactly a passion. Alright. So, let's start Religious studies teacher walked in right as the bell rang, signaling the start of fifth period. During class, each student took turns reading from the Bible as they were called on, but Yuji was having trouble following along. He tried to focus, but the words wouldn't stick in his brain. Anyone else having trouble reading the Bible? <laughs> this is apparently it. It didn't help that he was already behind in class, but no matter how hard he tried to read, he kept zoning out. Funny how the how the word that al that always preaches itself as the one true way has so many branches and interpretations. I mean, sorry for being shady, but then my family always says there's only one way, one way.明治期以降、この辺りにもイタンと呼ばれる大きな教派が生まれたそうだ。これはカルト的なもので、後に球団されて事実上解散したそうだがな。まあ、日本人は宗教的観念が薄い民族だと言われているが、みんなはどうだ
a perfectly normal reaction. Students simply weren't that これは先生の個人的な意見だが信仰を強要することは全くの無意味だと思ってる信じる人間もいれば信じない人間もいる人の数だけ心があるからな十人十色だ全ての人間に信仰心を与えるような宗教なんかあるわけがない Frankly, if everyone had the same beliefs and you know the same direction, it'd be kind of terrible. It wouldn't exactly be the most ideal. 一人一人が自然と神を信じるようになった時その時こそ信仰の始まりだと思ってる。神は信じる者も信じない者も皆平等に見ていてくださる。意識しなくてもみんなの心の中にいるんだ。This was ridiculously profound. I was not ready to be called out like this. This is something that I personally would like to believe. This is the closest thing that I would find to agreeing with a religion that you have to experience it for yourself. Despite my hardships, I wouldn't say that my connection with God is that intimate. I feel like I need to step out on my own, but trepidation and fear can really get in the way. It's really about. Overcoming yourself. I've done it a few times, but not to the extent that, you know, I felt a deeper connection. The students looked on dubiously as the teacher finished his sermon. Meanwhile, Yuji's mind began to wander. He asked himself, Does God truly exist? Maybe. He couldn't say one way or the other. Either way, it didn't really matter to him. If believing in God helped other people feel better, he wouldn't try to stop them. Perhaps the question of whether God was real wasn't all that important to begin with. Did thinking like this make him a non believer? This was all way over his head. Anyway, he had a feeling his outlook was fairly common. At least, he was pretty sure most of the class would agree with him. His gaze wandered around the room and landed on Dead Zor. What about him? How would he answer if asked about good? Wait, Mate. Why was he speculating about Dead Zor of all people? He needed to concentrate on the lesson. Returning his gaze to his Bible, he spent the rest of the fifth period pretending to read along. You know what's funny? When, I, when we had、um, church classes at school, I don't think we ever brought up the Bible. <laughs> there was a workbook, and there was a workbook. <laughs> oh my god, that, that's actually sounding bad. It does seem like Yuji was unable to focus on any of his classes that day. As soon as the bell rang, he made his way through the milling students to the garbage bins at the front of the room. He just wanted to get trash duty over with so he could go home and sleep. As he began to sift through the burnables, he heard the rattle of a wallet chain and sent someone standing right. Wallet chain, is that. Zinya? Oh, sorry, it was Tetsuo. A spark of anxiety shot through him, but he forced himself to stay calm as he continued his work. He heard Tetsuo's rustle, rustle around in the non burnable garbage for a while, then suddenly、oh、the、son. sound stopped. Tetsuo was talking to him. Suppressing the urge to panic, Yuji looked over to find him holding a plastic bag from the convenience store. Where? <laughs> Sorry. He could make out the leftovers of a to go meal inside. No, leftovers wasn't the right word, it was practically unopened. Once again, the culprit was Yuji himself. He'd received another free to go meal from work, but had to felt too sick to eat it. Loath as he was to waste food, he had no choice but to toss it. Then, oh. Racked with guilt, Yuji mumbled a vague reply. That's what narrowed his eyes. <laughs> What's with that pose? <laughs> oh, really? He couldn't bring himself to meet Tetsuo's piercing gaze. Turning back to the garbage can, Yuji sped through the rest of his work. He had to avoid eye contact at all costs. Something told him that one look was all Tetsuo would need to see into his soul. Discomfort slowly built in his chest. By the time he had finished checking the trash, he could hardly breathe. Unable to bear it a second longer, he pulled the bag out of the bin, tied it up, and hurried out of the classroom. As he left the main building, Yuji heaved a sigh of relief. All at once, the tension drained from his body. I wonder if there's a light novel of this. I feel like there would be. He just couldn't handle being around Tetsuo. The man was so intimidating. 
Even now, all the way out behind the school, he could still feel Tetsuo's eyes on him somehow. That piercing gaze pouring into the back of his head. Like where the blood was last episode. All of a sudden, he recalled Tetsuo's touch on his neck. Oh wow, I called it. Unconsciously, he traced the spot with his fingers. This evoked another memory of that crimson bath of that crimson bath water. He had seen blood on his fingers last night in the bath. Had he hallucinated that part too? Why had Tetsuo touched him yesterday? Had he just been messing around? Or had he seen something that had sparked his curiosity? After riding this train of thought in circles for a while, Yuji gave up. No amount of speculation was going to give him the answer. The fastest way would be to ask Tetsuo directly, of course, but he had no idea how to do that. It wasn't the kind of topic one broached casually. As they contemplated this, the twin dumpsters came into view. Wait, where's my best buddy? After stuffing the bags of burnables into its proper container, Yuji turned and walked away. On his way back to the front entrance, he spotted Tetsuo up ahead, walking towards him with its garbage in hand. Yuji lowered his gaze, determined to avoid eye contact. As he crossed paths, he detected a whiff of that pleasant scent again, but he was far too tense to wonder what it was. As he passed the shoe lockers and headed towards his classroom, it was all Yuji could, Yuji could do not to collapse on the spot. The only thing keeping him going was his desperate desire to go home and rest. The next day, Yuji still felt miserable. It seemed he had yet to overcome his exhaustion. From the moment he woke up, he'd felt feverish. Even his heartbeat felt more regular. It was a struggle just getting to school. Okay, he's got the occasional... He has had the occasion to curse his pathetic constitution many times over the course of his life, and today was proving to be yet another. Wow, we're just skipping days here. Nevertheless, he managed to get through his classes, though it took out every... Uh, took every ounce of his strength. Once afternoon was assembly had ended, Yuji headed straight to the garbage can and started sorting into burnable trash. His condition hadn't improved at all over the course of the day. On the contrary, it was getting worse. I'm just waiting for something to happen. This is a slow burn if I ever saw one. And not that a good kind of burn. He just wanted to go home. He sensed Tetsuo's presence but ignored him. As soon as he was done, he tied up his trash and walked to toward... He headed out. At the dumpsters, he tossed his bag inside and headed back the way he came. On the way back, Tetsuo was nowhere to be seen. He must have taken a different route. Relieved, he started packing up to go home. But just then, Makoto walked into the classroom. The moment he spotted Yuji, he broke into a cheerful oh. grin. Soji, you got that? Oh. Kairi, I'm going to go to the house. How are you going to deny him or what? Wari. I'm going to go to Excuse me. What? 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 Aw, oh, this boy. Makoto leaned in curiously, but Yuji pulled away. He didn't feel comfortable having someone stare at him up close. Granted, he could tolerate it most days, but today he just wasn't in the mood. Oh, okay. Well, it's a bit of a rush. Thankfully, Makoto could take a hint. He smelled so, apologetic. Okay, see you. Oh. See you. Sakiyama. I'll pop Yuji's homeroom teacher, Camille, holding- This is the first time I saw this guy. Holding a large beaker with a syringe and a pair of tweezers sticking out of it. His actual personality aside, Camille's general appearance gave him a certain air of sloppiness. I don't know, he cleans up well. Tall and bow-legged with a bit of a stoop, he wore thick spectacles and a dirty lab coat. Seriously, that description doesn't match the art. <laughs> He's too hot. His age was a mystery. He looked to be in his early 30s, but sometimes he could pass for a decade younger. Hi. Chemistry lab, that doesn't sound safe. He held out the beaker. Yuji wasn't happy about this, but rather than waste time trying to get out of it, he felt it would be easier just to get it over with. Wakarimashita. 
He nodded. Kamiya handed him the beaker, followed by a key. Kagakuhitsu no kagi da. Tojimori shite shokuhitsu ni modo shitoite kure. Warei na. Kamiya always kept the chemistry lab locked when not in use. Yuji wondered if it was school po- if that was school policy. With a grin, Kamiya walked off down the hall. Yuji looked down at the beaker inside. The chemistry lab was on the basement floor of the old school building. Anything that happens in an old school building is bound to have an accident. He headed for the stairs, eager to finish this errand as quickly as possible. The two buildings of the academy were connected via a basement level hallway. Nat said the hallway was only half on the ground, with windows that let in a decent amount of light. This sort of architecture was uncommon. The old school building had allegedly served the purposes in the, other purposes in the past. The basement floor was a relic from that time. What, a bunker? Yuji walked down the stairs and along the dimly lit hallway. With no ventilation to clear up the humidity, the air was uncomfortably damp. The place was deserted, his footsteps were the only sound. At the chemistry lab, he unlocked the door and stepped inside. Instantly, the smell of dust and mold stung his nose. Yeah, that sounds disgusting. The lights were off and the room was dimly lit. Rays of light peeked through gaps of in the closed curtains, dividing the neatly ordered desks and bookcases. Yuji always felt a little uncomfortable in this room. Everything felt so cold and sterile. It was suffocating. And yet, weirdly enough, today it felt reassuring to be there, like being tucked away in a cozy little nook. Signing the beaker on Kamiya's desk, Yuji turned back toward the door. But something stopped him in his tracks. Somehow... He felt reluctant to leave, so instead, he turned to press his forehead against the wall. It was cool and refreshing against his skin, easing his misery. He let out a long breath. I thought it smelled like mold. Enjoying the tranquility of the moment, he closed his eyes and something happened. Oh god. <laughs> a wave of intense nausea assaulted him. It was painful, like something was crushing his stomach. Fighting the urge to vomit, Yuji clapped a hand. Whoa, the lights are moving over his mouth and fell to his knees. All at once, he was overcome by dizziness and chills, not unlike the symptoms that presaged a fever. He collapsed against the legs of the desk. Had he let his exhaustion catch up with him? No, that wasn't it. This was something else. Oh god. Slowly, the discomfort in his gut began to change. His labored breathing went up an octave as his heart began to race. He opened his eyes, and the vague outlines of the dim classroom came into view. Everything was blurry. His hand slipped from his mouth to his throat as if pulled by an invisible magnet. Whoa, whatever this is, it wasn't pain. His body was out of control. As it continued, he felt a strange sensation in his gut, and realized the floor beneath him was wet with blood. Worse, strange lumps of something were floating in that blood. Oh my god. Okay, I knew this game was gonna get dark, but I did not expect Viscera at that level. I'm expecting horror stories like ghosts, but... He stood up. The heat in his body had all but vanished. Recalling the liquid, he quickly looked at his feet. But nothing was there. The floor was perfectly dry. Had he mistaken a shadow for something else? As he searched his memory, he looked toward the door. It was open, and someone was standing just outside, slow, silhouetted by the light streaming in through the windows. He stepped into the classroom. It took one step, and then another. As it approached, its features came into view. No. Yuji desperately wanted to be wrong. Terror rooted him to the spot, is it, Tetsuo? The figure lazily tossed a stack of papers onto the teacher's desk. Yee, Tetsuo. It was Tetsuo. Yuji's mind went blank. The room started spinning. With nowhere to run, he stood there, frozen in place. Then finally, a question popped into his head. Had he seen? Had Tetsuo seen? Been watching? His mouth was dry, his voice trembling as he trailed off. Is Kamiya shipping us? I feel like it's a ship. Tetsuo answered matter of factly, glancing at the stack of papers atop the desk. Silence. As always, Tetsuo was impossible to read. Yuji was starting to panic. He contemplated leaving, but quickly tossed that option out. He needed to know whether Tetsuo had seen him. Before long, the silence grew unbearable. Anger, anxiety, desperation swirled inside him. 
fighting the imposter screwy beans that fix this gaze on the man in front of him. It's Along what? It's Kara. Ita. Saki. So it's the Motekta. Oh, wow. That's what indicated the worksheets with a jerk of his head. In that case, maybe he hadn't seen anything. We just got you didn't see anything. Just as a hint of her leaf began to spread through Yuji's chest. I'm sorry, what? The blood drained from Yuji's face. Meanwhile, Tetsuo stared at him silently. Not a muscle of his face moved. Yuji could see no disgust or ridicule in his expression. But that only made him all the more terrifying. Surely Tetsuo must have some opinion about what he just witnessed. But with such a total lack of response, it felt almost like a robot was watching him. Even mockery would have been preferable to silence. At least then he'd know that what Tetsuo was thinking. Without that knowledge, how was Yuji supposed to know how to act? He may as well have been talking to a mannequin. Suddenly, Tetsuo turned back to the door. Before he could stop himself, Yuji called out to him. Tetsuo glanced back over his shoulder. But Yuji hadn't thought of what to say next. He could only stare at the floor in silence. Yuji looked up at him sharply. Did Tetsuo think he was worried about him spreading rumors? Somehow, this made Yuji feel lowered in dirt. He hung his head once more. This guy has the lowest self-esteem I've ever seen. After a moment, he heard slow, steady footsteps and felt Tetsuo disappear from the room. Then he heard, Look, if you got low self-esteem, you gotta take some self-care. Okay, that was conceited of me, but you can't. I don't know, it's just really hard. It can be hard to help someone with low self-esteem. They, Their opponent is literally themselves. So it's a struggle that you can only support with, but not solve. Unless they're the person themselves. Eh, going back. Yuji remained rooted to the spot until long after the sound had faded. His brain simply didn't know how to process what had just happened. However, one strong impression lingered in his mind. That's what was every bit as cold as the chemistry lab. That's one way to put it. Gradually, Yuji regained his composure and with it came a storm of self-loathing and shame. <laughs> it got worse. He snatched his book bag up off the floor and fled the chemistry lab, locking the door behind him. He then hurried down the hall and up the stairs, pausing briefly to drop off the key in the staff room before heading for the shoe lockers. All the while, his gaze was fixed to the ground. He couldn't bear to look anyone in the eye. He felt so miserable, he started to question whether he even belonged in this school. He could... He couldn't shake the wow and ah, the movement. He couldn't shake the memory of what he had done or the memory of Tetsuo's face. Each time it flashed through his mind, his heart leapt, leaped, and his image and the image crumbled away. Just as the shoe lockers came into view, he noticed Xenia headed his way from the opposite end of the hall. Mm-hmm. He was humming cheerfully to himself, but Yuji was in no mood to be dragged into another encounter. He felt like garbage, both physically and mentally. Hoping to avoid Xenia, Yuji kept his gaze firmly averted as he headed to his locker. As Xenia passed by, Yuji heard that strange clacking sound again. But he didn't have the energy to think about it now. Instead, he quickly changed into his outdoor shoes and left the building, all the while praying he didn't catch Xenia's eye. When he reached the main gate, Yuji glanced over his shoulder. Xenia was nowhere to be seen. Relief flooded him. Feeling safe at last, he shifted his gaze to the sunset and shuddered. Red. The one color he couldn't bear to see. Lowering his gaze, Yuji passed through the gate. Wow, this guy's traumatized from red now. <laughs> I'm really curious why we're switching perspectives between Yuji and Xenia. Meanwhile, Xenia strolled down the hallway, laughing to himself as he hummed. He just passed Sakiyama Yuji, a former classmate who had been held back a year due to excessive absences. Xenia typically wasn't one for remembering names, but Yuji was special. Xenia recognized him by his scent. What? Soft and sweet yet sharp at the same time, truly it was a challenge to describe. He noticed it for the first time at the beginning of first semester, the day Yuji had collapsed. Xenia had- oh my god. Xenia being shown up on time for once had passed Yuji by the lockers. At the time, the smell had been so faint he thought he might have imagined it. But today, he'd been close enough to confirm it. Sure enough, Yuji had a scent, one that only Zenya could detect. 
Oh my god, is there an alien species? <laughs> Spinning deftly on his heel like a practice dancer, Xenia turned and leaned back against the wall. Another giggle escaped his lips. The other students nearby gave him a wide berth as they hurried past. Then suddenly, Xenia stopped laughing. He pulled the brim of his cap down low and tilted his chin down with it. Oh my god, he knows what the hell's going on with us. His voice was nearly inaudible as a grin crept over his face. Rolling over the empty time, Yuji stared up at the ceiling faintly created by his bedside lamp. The bed springs creaked beneath him. For some reason, the familiar hum of the aquarium left felt louder than normal tonight. But right now, he didn't want to do or think about anything. After school let out, he'd called in sick to work. Then once he got home, he definitely immediately crawled into bed. Sadly, he was finding it surprisingly difficult just to lie there and turn his brain off. His thoughts kept dancing in an anxious spiral. Something was distinctly off about his condition today. It wasn't just poor health, there was something else. He'd never encountered symptoms like that before. Not to mention all those hallucinations. Maybe he had contracted some new illness? He'd been in and out of the hospital since childhood, but it wasn't something he could ever get used to. Every time he went in for a checkup, the doctor's expression would darken, and he'd wonder what fresh misery would awaited him next. He didn't understand what was happening inside his own body, and that terrified him. He knew that he should see a doctor straight away. It was always better to address health issues promptly, rather than allow them to fester. But yet, he couldn't bring himself to pull the trigger. He was just scared. Scared to learn exactly what was taking place inside him. That said, if his condition continued to worsen, he knew that he would end up burdening his sister. He couldn't let that happen. This wasn't getting him anywhere. He rolled over again, feeling pathetic. Speaking of Mr. Symptoms, that bizarre sensation he felt in the chemistry lab? What was that? He didn't enjoy thinking about it, but he couldn't get it out of his head. He remembered feeling something come out of him. Then his fingers had brushed something slimy and soft. But bef- where did it come out? But before he could find out what it was, Tetsuo had appeared. Tetsuo had seen it all, and there was nothing Yuji could do about it. That knowledge made his chest burn with shame. Yuji exhaled deeply, hoping to expel his misery. Looking up, he could see the faint glow of morning through his uh, curtains. Evidently, he'd agonized the whole night away. Hours later, his insomnia still showed no sign of letting up. Gingerly, Yuji sat up and got out of bed. Sleep deprivation had taken its toll. His body felt like lead, his thoughts like molasses. Molasses, sorry. Feeling slightly dizzy, he staggered to the dining room for a glass of water. As he opened the door, an old memory suddenly flickered before his eyes. A memory of Erika standing in the kitchen early in the morning making their lunches for the day. He had, Yuji had a habit of going for a drink of water just first thing after waking up. His sister knew this and would always have a full glass waiting for him on the table. Every morning when he walked into the room, she'd greet him with a bright smile. But now she was... Yuji closed his eyes and shook his head. There was no point getting all nostalgic. Those times were long gone. Erica was following her own path now, and he needed to do the same. The empty kitchen seemed to affirm his resolve. That day, Yuji didn't manage to drag his sluggish body to school until fourth period. After everything that happened with Tetsuo, he didn't want to go to school at all, but he didn't have a choice. Fourth period was chemistry, with no lab or exercises planned for the day the lesson was held in the classroom. Yuji slid the door open. All at once, the entire room turned to look. He knew he deserved it for coming in late, but regardless, he hated feeling like everyone was judging him. Their eyes followed him all the way to his desk. As he took his seat, Camille called out to him from behind the lectern. Yuji sighed internally. His poor health was no secret, and he appreciated Kamiya's, Kamiya's concern. But this kind of special treatment was just going to widen the gulf between him and the rest of the class. Nobody wanted to take, talk to the sickly guy who got him back. Meanwhile, Kamiya continued his lesson. Try as he might not to think about it, Yuji couldn't help but glance toward the windows out of the corner of his eye. It's getting a bit noisy, you guys. For the briefest moment before he looked away, he caught a glimpse of Tetsuo. His pulse quickened. Resolving not to look at him again, Yuji focused his attention on the lecture. What's the matter?
The bell rang, signaling the end of class and the start of lunch period. As Yuji leaned back in his chair, and Makoto walked over with a concerned Hi. expression. I wish they made sprites for the more concerned look. Oh, hi, Yuji. Kanada, are you okay? Oh. He nodded in Makoto's face. Yuji, stay. Hair is bad. Masao, da. Just. Nezuki is bad. おお、寝不足か。俺も昨日ゲームやってたら、うっかり時間が過ぎてて、ちょっと眠いんだよな。もう、そんなこと一緒にするなって話だけど。でも、辛い時は無理しないで休んだ方が。さきえま、ちょっ
こんな日はさサボっちゃいたくなるよなさっきやまたまにはサボっちゃえば I'm sorry, what's with this? Come on, are you dragging me into here so you can do something to me? y o u t o couldn't believe his ears. Did this old teacher really just say that? Ben, you're a big deal. Ben, you're a big deal. So, it's 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 a big deal. He laid back on the lab table and Yuji suppressed a smile. Obviously, Kamiya didn't care about keeping up appearances in front of his students. どうするもし崎山がそういう気分なら先生は内緒にしておいてあげるよ自然の流れに身を任せるということはとても大切だ無理にねじ曲げちゃうから I feel like this could be taken out of context He sat up once again, adjusting his glasses as he regarded Yuji with a serious expression. It was bizarre advice for a teacher to give, but he didn't seem to be joking. Regardless, Yuji took, shook his head. Are you serious? Really? Yes. 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 これは鍵閉めてから戻るから先行っていいよあと貴重な昼休みを潰しちゃったからねもし何だったら5限目が終わったら俺のところにいでこっそり何か食わせてやるよ失礼しますんよし。
although the nausea hadn't exactly been his fault, the fact remained that he'd shirked his duties. That afternoon, Yuji went home with a guilty conscience. People in Japan, is this? I have no idea. I have no words. It just. This is really hard on this guy. Teaching school to buy clothes, come with me, Zenya. The message popped up on Kitani's cell phone a few hours after. Oh, we're back to Zenya. <laughs> right, let's see. I'm gonna save. It's getting a little bit uh, reckless here. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Um, we're gonna continue this when I can find some more, much more quiet. Sorry about that. We're gonna have to cut this episode short. Anyway, California Mac is signing out. Thank you guys for joining me. This is getting really. The stakes are slowly right, getting higher. It's getting quite. I don't need. Wow, I'm low on vocabulary today. Uh, I'm just excited and nervous. I'm anxious. Okay, I found my word. California Mac is signing out. Bye for now.